for that. Let me say by faith, brothers and sisters, good to see us again. Thank you, Pastor Mo, and I actually hope that you are resting. <laughs> you know, the rest of Pastor Mo reminds me of what the Bible says. God rested on the seventh day, but Jesus said, I am still working. My father is still working. I hope that my pastor is resting, please. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless you for joining today, for trusting God that we'll see more brothers. I'm always on the lookout for brothers, chatting them up privately, praying for them, and looking out to be sure that they turn up for the, the, the only thing we have, or let me say the most powerful thing we have to live life on earth of all our assets is the word of God. So, and I noted this morning while preparing that this is the first time I am in a fellowship where people study God's word and pray six days together in a week. In many other places, it's one or it's two. So the reason for that is that as we see the day approach, as we see the end of time come close, we have to double up on our efforts to grow, to prepare, to be equipped, to be strong, to be set on fire. Because the things that are coming, the coming days that are approaching, are going to be really trying. Those who are prepared, those who have fire in their lamp, they will be ready. Those who are not, we'll just see how it goes for them. Praise God. So, uh, and I also want to give a shout out to all the uh, the lovely sisters, the big sisters, the tall sisters, the great sisters, the, you know, all the lovely sisters who have been bringing God's word to us in the last couple of days. You all are very inspired, very inspiring. Very, the things that you say, the things you teach are very instructive. And uh, as many of us as can live by this, we will also grow by them. So God bless you for the labor in the word. God bless you, those of us who are working, laboring in prayer. And I encourage everyone, please, uh, even if you're new, you can volunteer to pray. Let us build this work together. Let's do the work of God together. We're all called to do God's work, right? So in IBBC, IBBF, it is an opportunity to labor, to serve actively in, in, you know, in God's project, in God's house. So you can volunteer to pray. You can, first of all, join the prayers, you know, and then IBBC is very welcoming. It's very, very welcoming to all the people who are joining, right? Uh, under the leadership of Pastor Mo, we are all growing and, you know, sorry, please. We're all growing and, you know, even while growing, the opportunity is there to serve in one role or the other. So we are really grateful for the opportunity. And then we're hoping and praying, you know, and working that everyone else can grow alongside. Everyone else can come to a point where you can speak God's word. Everyone can come to a point where you can lead in prayer, you know, or just pray for everyone else. And if you look closely in IBBC and IBF, you will see that it is like a science laboratory. It reminds me of my science laboratory when I was a physics major. You put in and you, you get outputs. I see us pray and get and, and watch for answers. So it is not just in the Telegram group, it is not just prayer, prayer, prayer. We also see testimony, 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 because God is answering. God is a member of the Telegram group. God is in attendance in our Zoom meetings. This is proof that God is part of what we're doing in IBBC and IBBF. Feel free to invite anybody into the group invite people, their needs will be met. Their preparation is certain. That's it. And thank God for the leadership of Pastor Mo that allows us to be able to have a, a Malachi chapter three experience where we speak to each other. And the Bible says in those days, which is in these days, you no, know, we will speak to each other and God will keep, he will open a book of remembrance, taking note of the things that we're saying to each other. These are those days. So anybody who joins, it is for your benefit. It is for your benefit. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor Mo, for the opportunity. All right, so I'm, I'm speaking today on uh, 
a topic that I consider very curious, but I know that I am going to, you know, I know I'm going to explain <laughs> and it's going to be easily understood. It says we all should be prophets. We all should be prophets. Now, so I'll post two disclaimers. One, it doesn't mean that all of us must occupy the office of prophets. That's not what it means. I would, I, would, I would encourage every one of us to go back to IBB, I Believe Bible Fellowship YouTube channel and look for Pastor Mo's teachings on the gifts. They are very instructive. Honestly, they are very enlightening. For me, I mean, on a, if you read, if you see, you know, those teachings, you will be very, very, you know, your attention will just be grabbed. You'll be very, very instructed. The gifts of the spirit, the gifts of God, the spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts. There are so many of them. Okay, so the, the in, in one of those teachings, Pastor Mo did stress the difference between the office of the prophet and the gift of prophecy. You know, someone can prophesy, you can prophesy, and then there is the person who operates in the God office. So I'm not talking today about the office of the prophet. And, you know, I'm rather speaking about people who the Holy Spirit has made contact with. Once the Holy Spirit has made contact with you, <laughs> it will come out of your mouth. You will speak the word of God. You will speak the word of God. So I'm referring to prophecy in the light of speaking the words of the Holy Spirit, the words of God, the words that the Holy Spirit makes to wake up within you, the words you find in the Bible that are processed in your inner man. You are instructed, you receive understanding, and then you speak it forth. That's what I mean by prophecy today. And I don't want us to get it wrong. The second disclaimer is that this is not a call to idleness. It is not a call to idleness. You it, it, do not think that your speaking will replace your acting. Your, your speaking will replace the things you need to do to unlock the doors that are before you. There is the, 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 the call to speak and there is the call to action as Andrea puts it. This call to action and this call to, to speaking, to prophecy. Right. So today we're focusing on the call to speaking and we all should be prophets. All of us should have the word of God in our mouth. All of us should know how to use it. All of us should know how to speak it. All of us should know how to even acquire it. All of us should be prophets. It is the desire of God. It has always been the desire of God for his people to carry his spirit for his people, for his spirit to dwell amongst his people. It's always been the desire of God. Forget the way he did things in the Old Testament where he would just speak one person and you would hear that in certain moments, the spirit of God will come on the person and the person will do a certain thing. The spirit of God, the hand of the Lord came upon me and I spoke. The hand of the Lord came upon Samson and he did this and he did that. It, it, it appeared to be, <laughs> to be periodic. But in God's mind, and we live in the days of the will of God. We live in the days of the New Testament, the move of the Holy Spirit, the era of the Holy Spirit. Now, in his plan, it has always been for his people to at every point in time have his spirit, not just once in a while visitation. Not just once in a while visitation. So that's always been his plan. And he prepared the whole of creation to the coming of Christ because when Jesus came, died, and rose, he released the spirit of God and it became possible for everyone to be baptized, for, you know, for everyone to make contact in the spirit. And I tell you what, everybody on earth, all eight point something billion, according to the estimates, people on earth who desire to be baptized in the Holy Spirit can be baptized in the Holy Spirit, can speak the words of God. It is only because people, I mean, it is the world is the way it is because people just don't want to, they just don't want to identify with God. They just don't want to, you know, submit to him. They just don't want to receive his spirit. They, ju they just, they, they, the God of this world has blinded their minds and they allowed it happen. Because if they want to be free, they will be free. The word is there. The word is out here. The Holy Spirit can reach and uh, everybody on earth, no matter where you are, nobody can hide from him. Just be on earth, right? So let me read. Uh, I have 
four anchor scriptures very inspiring. I'll start with Numbers 11, which is uh, very popular. 11 verse 29. There's someone whose mic is, uh, is alive. His microphone is alive. Please, you can mute it for the time being. Well, from verse 28, and Joseph, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, my Lord, my Lord, Moses, forbid them. Forbid who? People who were, who were prophesying in the camp. People who were back there prophesying. And Moses said to him, oh, are, you, are you feeling bad for my sake? Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets? And that the Lord will put his spirit upon them. So you see, this prophecy, it, it, it will come out of your mouth the moment his spirit makes contact with you. It is so easy because Jesus did the difficult part. It is so easy because Jesus moved the part that was difficult. He handled the part that was, he paid the price that no human paid. That's why it's easy to have the same spirit the spirit that God, I mean, think about it. The spirit that God created the earth with is available to you. The spirit that hovered over the face of the deep, the spirit of God is available to you. And he's standing right next to reach you, to, to, to speak through you, to speak to you, to speak through you, to save you, to bring you from darkness into light, to relate with you. I remember an instance when uh, Jehovah's Witnesses came knocking on my door. I can't remember where I lived at the time. And uh, where I was at the time, they used to teach us that, you know, don't even open a door to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Don't, don't open your door to them. The Bible says don't even sit with them. Don't even speak with them. Well, so, well, I decided, okay, I'm going to do things differently. So when they came knocking on my door on that day, I opened and I allowed them to speak to me, but I, I was, um, <laughs> I was uh, determined to make sure they don't knock on my door another day. So they said, hello, brother, I would like to speak to you about the words of Jehovah. And I said, yes, thank you, welcome. I'd also like to speak to you about, about, about Jesus Christ, about the Lord Jesus Christ. They said, oh, fine. So we would like to, you know, uh, open, they, they began to open their Bible. And I said, well, we're not going to read from your Bible. We're going to read from mine. They said, okay, no problem. But you see, the thing is, we'll have to talk about the difference in our translations. I said, well, you teach that the Holy Spirit is a force. But I know the Holy Spirit is a person. This is why we can't even have this conversation. You should be listening and I should be teaching. You should be, you've come to my house. You should sit down and I teach you the truth. They said, no, but the Holy Spirit is a force. The Bible does not say he's a person. I said, who are you talking about? Are you talking about the same person I spoke to this morning? And they were shocked. The female among them was scared. She was petrified. She was shivering. You know, there's something we say in Nigeria, which is God forbid, like God forbid. Because you, she, she has met someone who is telling them with conviction that I spoke with the person of the Holy Spirit this morning. You can't tell me he's a force. Truly, the word, the word, the God, the God, the God of this world has blinded the eyes of many. So Moses said, Don't feel bad for my sake. I sent for all these people to come out so they could be anointed. I could pour, you know, God could pour out his spirit on them and they would start prophesying and they would serve in the offices that were available. And some of them stayed back. And Eldad and Midad were baptized in the spirit back there in the camp. And Joshua said, let's go stop them. Let's, it's not forbidden. They should have, Moses said, keep, keep, hold on, hold on, hold on. I even wish that the whole millions of the people in the camp would be baptized like that. This was in God's desire. Now, Jewel chapter 2 makes it even clearer. This is another popular scripture. Verse 28 and 29 makes it even clearer. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And even your servants 
handmaids, nobody will be disqualified from receiving the Holy Spirit or, or prophesying. It will have to be that they don't want it. The Spirit is available for everyone. We should all be prophets. And that reminds me of what Peter said in the book of Acts chapter 2, from verse 38 to 39. He said, then Peter said unto them, repent, which is all it takes, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you will receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. This promise, this gift, this authority, this position, this placement, this promotion is for everyone. It is for everyone. It's for everyone. I tell you what, the first book ever written or the oldest book of the Bible, some people say is Job. This is what Job had to say. Job 22. And he's talking about a righteous person. He's talking about the righteous. If we, if we, if we go from verse 22, he says, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. Lay up his words in thine heart. And take note of this scripture, because we're going to turn it, touch it somewhere. If thou return to the Lord, which is that repentance that Peter spoke about in Acts, if you, re if you return to him, to the Almighty, you will be built up. You will put iniquity far from your tabernacles. You will lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty shall be your defense and you will be, you have plenty of silver, prosperity. For then you, for then shall thou have your delight in the Almighty and shall lift up thy face unto God. You will make your prayer unto him and he will hear you and you will pay thy vow. And this is where I'm going. Thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established. What else are we talking about? This is prophecy. You will decree a thing. Now, this, 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 this dimension of prophecy is not foretelling where, you, where, where God gives a person the gift, the ability like, you know, gifts like word of knowledge. Please go check that, that teaching by some more word of knowledge and prophecy. You know, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is decreeing a thing that I'm talking about. And it happens. And he, listen, now Job was not saying, you know, now listen, Job wasn't saying you will pray to God and it will happen. There is a place for you to pray to God and receive answers. But there is a place for you to make decrees in your world. You are called to decree a thing and see it established. The light shall shine upon your ways. You are called, you have the gift. Once you have the Holy Spirit, once you've made contact with the Holy and let me tell you, the thing about the Holy Spirit is that he is so willing to take residence in your vessel that long after you've received, you, you can receive him without any physical, you know, any physical, immediate physical changes and evidences. I used to be deceived back, you know, I struggled a lot to give my life to Christ because I was, I was, I was going to this place one American church in my, in my country. And, you know, they will teach that the moment you give your life to Christ and you have salvation, you will feel the rain come upon you or you will feel the fire from your inside or you feel a breeze that will just blow from left to right. So I tried and I did not feel anything. I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried and labored and labored and did not feel no rain, did not feel no breeze, did not feel no fire. So I said, this working for me. You see, I struggled like that. When I gave my life to Christ, what did I feel? Conviction. I felt conviction. That's what I felt. I felt a certainty. I felt determination to please God. I felt a desire to study his word. I felt a desire to pray. These were my own proofs. In, at that moment, when I, you know, when I, I handed my soul and my life to him, I did not feel any physical effects. Physical effects came later. I didn't feel it at that instant. The Holy Spirit is so ready, so eager, so present to fellowship with his people that you will have to just receive by faith alone. You will decree a thing. You will decree a thing. 
We have to grow beyond just, oh, you know, the, the brethren, should, you know, it is good. The brethren pray with you. It is good. In Nigeria, what is, what is very popular in Africa is, oh, the man of God, you know, oh, the man of God. People will go and sing and they'll come to church very early because they're like, oh, the man of God is going to pray over me. The man of God will, will pray, pray for me. So when the man of God has prayed for them, they'll go back and live in sin and they'll come back and the man of God will pray for me. And they live by that. You see, for most of those kind of people, usually their problem catches them in the midnight when the man of God is not available to pray for you. The problem comes, I mean, the devil knows when you go to church and when you come back, he knows when you're sinning, he knows when you are. So people must come to a point where they live their lives as though they have been, knowing that, knowing that they have been lifted by God. And, and, and I'm talking about people who are believers, people who have received Christ, people who are serving him, people who are his own, if, you know, given everything over to him. You must, it's not enough for you to just be born again. You must operate the instruments of that office. You must see the born again life as a position in the spiritual scheme of things, as a position, a placement. You have been lifted. We have been lifted to sit with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities. We don't sit there for comfort. We sit there to administer his creation. We sit there to issue decrees. You are a king. You are a, you are, you're not just, uh, I just gave my life to Christ. So I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I just humble myself. I'm a child of God. You are a king. While being a child, you're also a king. You will approach life like that and see them answer you. There is a prayer you pray to God. As Job said, you just pray to him. And then there is the place where you make decrees and make demands. Let me move on. So we should all learn to speak the word of God. We should all learn to speak the word of God. I show you something that Peter said. The Father explains it. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse thirteen to fourteen. Very inspiring scripture. Very inspiring. We having the same spirit of faith, because it takes the spirit of faith. It is. It takes the spirit of faith. You will see why. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. All it takes is the spirit of faith on your inside. If you have truly believed, open your mouth and speak. If you have truly believed that you are already healed, open your mouth and speak that healing. If you have truly believed that God has sentenced you to a life of prosperity and abundance, open your mouth and speak it. What did God do in the, in, in the beginning of Genesis chapter one? Well, I mean, we know that, we know that Pastor Moore always teaches us it is, it is not as literal as King James says, you know. So, but let, let, let's use Genesis chapter one, verse two and three and all that as the beginning. What did God do? He spoke. He spoke. That's how he worked. That was his labor. He rested on the seventh day. What were you doing, sir, from day one to day six? He was speaking. He was speaking, and he has put those words in our mouth. He, we have to realize the authority of those words. They are written. They are taught. You can read them. You can hear them. The words are powerful. I like a Michael Smith song. I don't know if it's actually his song, Ancient Words, one of my best songs, Ancient Words. Ever true, changing me and change. The word can change anything and anyone. You know, the physical symptoms of your circumstance today, you have the tool to change that circumstance. You have it. We believing, we speak. We having the same spirit of faith, just as it is written in the Psalms. I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. As long as you believe, you have to speak. Speak the word of God. Speak what you believe. Once I believed, I spoke. Mine is to speak. It is God's to perform. He said to Jeremiah, what do you see? He said, I see a tree 
And God said, you have seen well, for I will watch over my word to perform it. Now you will watch over your word to perform it, but you're sending Jeremiah to speak. That means he will watch over the words, his words that are in Jeremiah's mouth to perform them. Jeremiah's own is to speak. You don't speak the word of God and try to make it come to pass. When you speak the word of God, go to rest. Allow him work it out. Now, somewhere along the line, you're going to see how to speak and speak and speak. How to speak again and again. So we should all learn to speak what we desire out of God's word into being. We should all learn to speak what we desire out of God's word into being. Jesus Christ, as Jesus as he is, he was called the word of God. And in fact, in the re re revelation, the, 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 uh, John saw him and saw on his thigh written the word of God. This word we have is very powerful. It is so powerful that if you dwell on just the text without the spirit, you will do yourself harm. The Bible says the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. The spirit of the word gives life. Jesus himself said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So just take the words of Jesus and speak it to your world. Speak it to your circumstance. Speak it to your situation. Speak it to your environment. Take his words. What we have is the word. Believe me, what we have is the word. In this New Testament, what we have is the word. You see, this was why God refused to negotiate with Moses, to listen to Moses and allow him to get into the promised land because he told Moses, when you get to this rock, speak to it. Don't strike it. Speak to it this time. Speak to it and it will bring forth water. And the Bible says in the New Testament that that rock was Christ. Moses went to the rock and out of, you know, these guys put pressure on him. He was so unhappy and upset. So instead of speaking to the rock, he slammed the rock and the rock brought forth water. But you see, this was God said, you, he did not sanctify God. God, there is a reason he needed to speak to the rock at that time. In the New Testament, there is no action we take that must not be backed up with the word. You want to take the communion, we must first speak the word over it. You want to take the wine, you must first speak the word over it. Everything is words. Let's move on. Now, I also see, saw something very interesting. You know, the contention of words. Jacob, in his unhappiness and disappointment with uh, his first son, Reuben, Jacob, in Genesis chapter 49, as he was leaving while in Egypt, while he was about to pass on, he spoke over Reuben. He said, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of my dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, you shall not excel. I, if, at this time, this is not Jacob speaking. This is Israel, the prophet speaking. He said, unstable as water, you shall not excel. And he gave reason, because you went up to thy father's bed and defilest it. And then, and then he now reduced him to third person. He said, he went to my couch. This was his reason for decreeing that Reuben was now limited and Reuben could not move forward anymore. 400 years later, this is what happened. 400 years later, you know, it, it, is, it, is, it, is, uh, it is estimated that from when Jacob died to when Moses was born was about 300 years. You know, so Moses lived 120 years and all that. Now, when Moses was about to leave, this is how he intervened. Deuteronomy uh, 33, verse 6. Unstable as water, you will not prosper. You will not excel. When it was Moses' turn, Moses intervened for Reuben. And in his own decree, he said, let Reuben live and not die. And let not his men be few. So one person, of course, justified, placed a curse on Reuben. 400 years later, another person rose up with justification and intervened by words. The first one spoke words. The second one spoke words. You can use words to counter words. 
You can use words to rearrange your life. You can use words to rearrange whatever it is that may be like a spell, a curse. You can use words to cancel them. Let Reuben leave and let not his men be few. This was now the prophet Moses. So why do we speak? Why do we prophesy? One, to expand the kingdom of God through evangelism. We need prophecy. We need people who speak the word of God, who decree things and see them come to pass in evangelism to grow the kingdom of God. We need people who know how to take the word of God in their mouth and do what Christ said. Let me tell you something. When you preach to another person, it is not your skill that converts the person. It is a spirit in the words that you speak. Without the spirit, the person will maybe be entertained or you debate with them, or the person will be enlightened, or the person's curiosity will be piqued, you know, or the person will just be, you know, they'll just get an idea. Not, there will be no change in their lives. There will be no impartation of salvation. There will be no deliverance for them without the spirit. So it is the spirit and it is not the skill of the speaker. Any good public speaker that just takes God's word and, okay, I'm a motivational speaker. I know how to get the word of God and then inspire people. You now take it without the spirit. You will end up entertaining them. You end up maybe encouraging them. End up, you will never save any soul. It is the spirit in the word, in the mouth of the teacher that converts souls. It is the spirit in the word, in the mouth of the evangelist that convicts the hearts of men of sin. So, 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 so before you preach to anybody, before you target anybody and say, Lord, I need this person, you should first of all have prayed for the person and prepare yourself with the words. What did the Bible say in Hosea? Let's read Hosea chapter... Should be Hosea chapter, let me find it. It says, take with you, Hosea chapter 14, verse 2. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Take with you, this is still in the Old Testament, but like Pastor Mo will teach us about the principle of types and shadows. This is a present day reality, a New Testament reality. Take with you words, equip yourself with words. He didn't say equip yourself with thoughts. He didn't say equip yourself with a sacrifice. No, equip yourself with the word. Take with you words. Carry a word. Carry the word. Take the words from God, from the Bible. Take the words from teachings. Take with you words. That's what you need. So to expand the kingdom of God, you see that in Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, go into the nations, go and make disciples and teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Lo, I am with you always. Teach them, teach them, take my word and teach them and make disciples of them. The second is uh, to lift up men. The reason why we all must prophesy, to lift up men. And you see that in Job 22, verse 20, 29. When men are cast down, you will say there is a lifting up. Let's read it. Let's read it. It's a very exciting scripture. When men are cast down, you will say there is a lifting up. It is actually, it actually dovetails with the, this, the anchor scripture we read, which, was, which said you will make a prayer to him and he will hear you and you will pay your vows. You will decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon your ways. 29, when men are cast down, then thou shalt say there is a lifting up and he will save the humble person. <laughs> He will save, he shall save the humble person. When men are cast down, you, there is someone that must say there is a lifting up. This is the kind of prophecy I'm talking about. It is not predicting, it's not predicting, it's programming. It's not predicting, it is programming. You will decree a thing and it will be done as you have said. And the light will shine on your path. And when men are cast down, it didn't even say if men are, men will be cast down. Men will be cast down. There will always be the situation where men are cast down. But you have to know who you are. You shouldn't be among men who are cast down. You should be amongst those who are saying, say lifting up. And when you pronounce that there is 
up, you will see that amongst men who are cast down, God will raise up some people who are humble. There is a lifting up. When you, what do you see in, in IBBF? We, we pray, we, you know, we see us praying for, like Andrea, for example, she brought uh, the, the case of that lady in Croydon in the UK that was kidnapped and she brought it over to the US for us to pray over. You know, a typical person may be like, mm, it's a Croydon, I don't know, it's Croydon, I don't know, what's Croydon, UK, somebody kidnapped, they kidnap people all the time. You know? But in IBBF, what you have is a company of prophets, people who will speak over people they don't know. That's what happened. You decree a thing and the young lady was delivered. Or is it not so? The young lady was delivered. We decreed someone like me. I kept checking for the testimony and the testimony came. It did not disappoint. Do I know the young lady? I have no idea. I don't know her. We don't know her. But when men are cast down, you will say there is a lifting up. Recently, you know, Pastor Mo gave us an instruction which was very, very interesting to me because it looked to be in the opposite direction of where everyone else is going. Everyone is saying the American economy is going down. Yes, it served Joe Biden right. Yes, it served the Democrats right. We told them, we told them, we told them. Trump was a better, Republican was a better person. Everybody's debating. The American economy is going down. Even those of us in Africa were interested in the American economy thousands of miles away. It's going down, it's going down, it's going as if it's something to me. And then the woman of God came and said, let us pray for the American economy. Let's speak over the American economy. There are many people that fund the work of God, the kingdom of God, in that, that same economy that is going down. If it goes down, they go down together. It, it looked to me like the reverse. It was the opposite direction of what everyone else was saying. Because when men are cast down, you don't join them. When men are cast down, you don't report it as news. When men are cast down, you don't detail. This is the detail of their going down. Thousand, four thousand people have just died from so 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 and so. Three percent of so 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 have died of cancer. No, you will say there is a lifting up. You will say there is a lifting up. The next is to counter contrary speakings. The next reason you must prophesy is to counter contrary speakings or contrary forces. And I don't have time. I will just show a lot if you. But let me read. Let's read Luke 21, verse 15. Luke 21, verse 15. Already, we already saw in Jeremiah, uh, we, we already saw where Moses countered what Jacob said and intervened for Reuben. Now let's talk about uh, it's Luke 21, verse 15. For I will give you a mouth and a wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. This in itself is a whole textbook of lessons. This is too rich. This is too Juicy. I will give you a mouth and a wisdom, the promise of Jesus. He said, I will give you a mouth. Verse 14, which is before the verse 15, he said, settle it in your hearts that you will not meditate beforehand what to answer. Because in that hour, I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversaries will not be able to gainsay or resist. The things that will come out of your mouth as I baptize you in the spirit, as you study my word, as I pour my spirit out into you and over you, the things that will come out of, out of your mouth will be a mouth and a wisdom which nobody who calls themselves your enemy can, can, can understand or resist. I will give you a mouth and a wisdom. This is for all of us. Don't forget, Peter said, it is for everyone, everybody, your children, your sons, people are far off, those whom the father will call. I will give your mouth and a wisdom. In Zechariah 4, verse 6 to 9. Zechariah 4, verse 6 to 9. I have to read this. Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, into Ephraim unto Laura, unto Veronica, unto whoever puts their name in there. 
saying, saying, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Saying, saying, it has to be said, not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And then it, then it addresses a confrontation and says, who art thou, O great mountain? Who art thou? Who? It didn't even say what. It said who? Because he has attributed living qualities to this mountain, this problem, this confrontation, this issue, this politics, this resistance, this nagging sickness. Who are you, great mountain? Before me, you will be made plain. It has to be said. It has to be said. And the fourth reason I found why we speak and prophesy is to fulfill the will of the Lord on earth. Is to fulfill his will on earth in prayer. To fulfill the will of the Lord on earth in prayer. Like Jesus said, he taught the disciples a, temp a template for praying. And he said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is to be said. It is to be spoken and it is to be acted out. But it must be spoken. Your will be done on earth as it is. And if you see that, that Zechariah chapter 4. This was the plan of God for the children of Israel. They had to speak, not by might, nor by power. That mountain will come down. Why? So that the building of the temple could be fulfilled. In the same way, in your time, in our time, in this New Testament, when you have a problem that is confronting the plan of God for your life, the purpose of God for your life, you can speak to it and address it, even if, if you address it as a human being. Who are you, this mountain? Before me, you mention your name. You will be made plain. And we will raise the capstone. I will finish this project. You have to speak. How do we prophesy? What's the process? How do we go through? What should we do to get to that point? You know, where you, you know, you're not, you're not a victim of the environment. You can speak your way out of any issue. First of all, know the word of God in abundance. Know the word of God. I think I have two minutes more. You know, I've timed myself today. So I'll see how I can speed it up. Know the word of God in abundance. Matthew 12, verse 34 to 37. So know the word of God in plenty quantity. The more of God's word you know, the more you can stand the chance before the enemy. Don't forget the enemy, the devil, Lucifer. That one that was in the Garden of Eden. He's been on earth for a long time. In the book of Ezekiel, the Bible says, you were in Eden. You were in Eden. You, Lucifer, you were in Eden. So he's been on earth for a long time. That's why when he was tempting Jesus, he had words to speak to Jesus. He quoted scripture. But you see, Jesus did not let him defeat him because Jesus knew more scripture than he did. He quoted scripture and Jesus had a scripture to handle him. You must have the word. First of all, you must have the word. And in that Matthew I think it should be that, Matthew. The Bible says it is from the abundance of the heart that the mouth will speak. So you must know and have the word in abundance so you can speak the word. If you don't know it, what are you going to say? If you don't know it, what are you going to say? When something happens, instead of shouting, screaming all the popular uh, Western expletives that you all have, you know, speaking all these exclamations, all the, oh, my mother, oh, my whatever it is that you shout. Why don't you shout a word? Why don't you reply to a word? You should come, you should be so full of the word that when something happens that is accidental, instead of you reacting with, oh my God, or reacting with, oh my gosh, or reacting with, wow, you have a word to speak. Instead of reacting with the typical social way, you have a word to speak. You should be that full of the word. Second thing, obey the word you know. If you don't ask the word that you know, you're wasting your time. You're building your house on nothing. You're building your, your life on nothing. If you don't obey God's word, if all you do is hear, you don't obey, you don't practice it. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians from verse 10, it says you will discipline disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. You will discipline, some, some I think Amplified even says you will punish or penalize disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled or some would say is complete. You have to be found obeying God's word for creation to obey you. The devil will not obey anybody who does not obey God's word. You must practice the things that Christ says. Thirdly, speak. 
with conviction. Speak knowing that what you're saying will come to pass. Don't speak as if you're guessing. Don't speak with fear. Don't speak with uncertainty. Don't say, could I, would I, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I, there's no such time. When you're face to face with a mountain, that's not where you guess. That's where you speak the word of God like a sword. You speak it like a fire. The Bible says the word is like a hammer. You don't, you don't, you don't handle a hammer as if you're handling an iPhone. You don't handle an hammer as if you're handling cork, of, um, polystyrene. You don't handle it like the hammer. That's a weapon. You release the weapon the way it should be. That's it. Speak with conviction. Let me tell you something, and I'm about to wrap up. Wrap up. You see, Jesus so spoke. As a matter of fact, before Jesus even came, for many hundreds of years, God made people to speak about his coming. Many people spoke. And, you know, every, they, they spoke all the prophets. The Bible says the law and the prophet. They testified of him. They spoke and spoke and spoke and spoke up to Isaiah. After Isaiah spoke for 400 years, people were still speaking. It was still getting documented. And then there was even the 400 years that theologians call um, uh, silent years, something like that. But even in those 400 years, there was the like, the like of, of Hannah, who, the prophetess, who got married and then lost her husband. She became a widow. She stayed in the temple praying, speaking. And then there was the other man, Simeon, praying, speaking. And then came John the Baptist, speaking. And Jesus came. Now, they were all speaking of Jesus. Now, when he came, he did not shut up. He spoke. He spoke of his death. For three years, Jesus spoke about his, you know, his dying and his resurrection. He's dying and his resurrection. And what will happen after that? He's dying and his, he so spoke that when they sent people to arrest him, they could not arrest him. They said, we, we, the people who were sent, the people who were sent to arrest him became his audience. They became his fans. They came under the influence of his teaching. He so spoke that they went back without, without the, uh, the, they saw him, they could not carry him. Not because he threw a hand and made them fall. No, but because he, he was speaking. They saw him speaking. That's how strongly he spoke. But do you notice with me that when it was time for him to be crucified, he reduced his speaking. He began to speak very little. Herod would speak to him and he would just answer a little bit. Pilate would speak to him and he would just answer a little bit. He was just, why? Why? Because as long as you are speaking, the enemy cannot swallow you up. As long as you're speaking, the devil will not take your life. As long as you're speaking, you cannot be on the back foot. So he had to reduce his speaking so that they could have their way. He was born to die. This was the path of his purpose. He was born to be, to be betrayed, crucified, killed, to die, and to resurrect because of man, right? So he had to reduce the thing that could stop them from doing it. He was speaking for all these years, and then it is time, and they're asking him, I mean, he was only speaking, he was only responding to questions just to keep conversation going. He kept quiet. He held back his words, and to prove, to prove what I'm saying, when they tried to defend him, he said to them, listen, he said, the disciples tried to defend, he said, don't defend me, don't defend me. I know what to do. If I wanted self-defense, I know what to do. And what did he say he would do? I would speak. I would speak. And 10,000 angels would show up and nobody would lay a hand on me. He would have spoken. He would have spoken. But here we are. He reduces speaking so he could hand over his life. So that, so that they could, he, he, he said, he said, he said I, I have the power to lay down my life and to take it up again. So the power to lay down his life, it also meant you reduce how you speak. This is Jesus Christ. The fourth thing you do as you speak with conviction, the fourth thing you do is you address the situation with specificity. Talk as if you are an Old Testament prophet. If the problem that is confronting you is diabetes, speak to diabetes. If the thing affecting you is stroke, speak to stroke. If possible, go and find out all the things that medical doctors know. Learn the language and address those little factors one by one. You have to speak. Speak to them directly. In Mark chapter, is it 11? Mark 20, 11, 23. He said he shall have.
of what he said. You will have what you say. He said, if anybody will speak to, if any man will speak to this mountain and said, he gave details, be uprooted from here and be cast into the sea. If he does it with conviction, if he believes that what he has said is, is, is going to happen, he will have what he said. You will have what you say. You will have what you say. If you feel like leaving the earth, all you need to do is, oh, I'm feeling sickly. Looks like my time on earth has come. Well, my grandma, my grandchildren, come, come, come. I've written my will. I'm ready to leave the world. Oh, I feel so sad. I feel so sick. I'm so depressed. Oh, the enemy is just taking me apart one by one. I pray, hope I hope I make heaven. If you lament like that, you will have what you see. But if you are not ready to leave the earth and you're prepared to leave, you can speak. People did it in the Old Testament. People did it in the Old Testament. You can speak. If you know that your plan, your, your assignment on earth is not done, you can speak and interrupt whatever the enemy is doing. The last thing I would like to say is be prepared to speak again and again and again. Please, please. And this is, this is the part that affects us in, this, in the contemporary day. Be prepared to speak again and again and again. Be prepared to speak to that situation again and again and again. Let it not be that you spoke the first time and you say, oh, I, I thought God said I should speak and you quit. No, go back and speak again. In Revelations of all place, chapter 10, verse 10 and 11, they told John, they said, you will prophesy again. You will prophesy again. You will speak again. In, in, in Ezekiel's uh, situation, in Ezekiel, in the valley of dry bones with Ezekiel, the prophet in there, God told Ezekiel, he said, listen, speak to these dry bones. I will put breath in them. I will do this. I'll do that. I'll do that. And he spoke. And guess what? And the flesh came on them, the sinews and all of that. But there was no breath. A carnal or childlike baby Christian would have said, oh God, but you said you will put breath in. Instead of complaining to God, speak to that thing. Speak to them. Be like Moses before the Red Sea. Instead of complaining to God, Lord, you brought us here to destroy us. Pharaoh behind us, the mountains beside the Red Sea. In front. Speak to the river. Approach it. Be convicted. Speak to the problem. Speak to the issue. You have a nagging financial issue. Speak and be ready to speak again and again and again and again. Be ready to speak again and again and again. This is what the, 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 the Russian, the USSR people did when they were persecuting Christians. You know what they did? They would play, you know, uh, they were communists. So they would play Karl Marx. They would play a certain recording that says Karl Marx is, is king, something like that. Jesus is not God. Karl Marx is king. And they would play it over and over in the ears of the, the prisoners. And many of the prisoners that survived that punishment, they came out and said, listen, this thing is very traumatic. So I'm now like, if somebody, if I have someone that has a situation, a problem, maybe a stubborn child, all I need to do is to expose that child to the word of God. I will put a, a recorder in their room while they are sleeping. The word will be playing. The word of God will be playing. When they wake up and they are imagining their next mischief, the word will be playing. I could even say, listen, I'm not going to flog, I'm not going to spank you. Just make sure that you don't touch this thing. I will expose you to the word again and again and again. There will be a change. If you will speak without stopping, the enemy will quit. If you will speak without ending, the devil will quit. That mountain will collapse. So Ezekiel went, spoke to the dry bones. And guess what happened? This time, the breath came. So don't, Jesus, 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 walk, while walking a miracle, you know, he touched this blind man. And the blind man said, yes, my eyes are open, but I see men as trees walking. I, I see Jesus Christ, Jesus, the maker, the creator, without whom nothing was made that was made. He's on earth walking a miracle. And this man's eyes open. And the man says, I can see, but I'm seeing only partly. Jesus did it again. And the man's eye properly opened. So don't be discouraged that you spoke the first time and things did not change. Things are actually changing. I put it to you that things are actually changing. It's just not on the surface yet. Don't stop. If Ezekiel stopped, that army that he saw, they will still be dead. But there, there will be no dry bones anymore. Just, you know, but there, there, there will be no life in them. So he had to speak again. Don't be discouraged. You spoke the first time. And you went for the first job interview. 
You spoke at the gates. You spoke inside. You spoke in tongues. You spoke prophecies. You praised the Lord. You did everything. And they still rejected you. Speak again. Speak again. Either that job or the next one. As a matter of fact, if I come out of that one, I had this, I had this testimony. I just want to wrap up. I had this testimony. I applied to go to, I requested to go to Canada and they rejected me. 2013. And they said, you have not traveled before. And I sat there and I said, they will invite me to Canada. I said, they will invite. I did not write. I spoke it, but I can't forget. I said they will invite me to Canada. By 2015, I was invited. I did. I didn't go. I, I, as in, I got the letter. I was invited to Canada, and I said I'm not going. In two years, and I, I didn't even speak multiple times. That was how I handled that disappointment. They rejected my application because, in my my opinion, I was like, if I'm going to somebody's country, I'm going there to add value. If I'm going to somebody's country, I'm going there to add and build that society. So if you reject me, well, so I turn around. Instead of basking in the, because there was, there was the opportunity to be depressed. The lady who was my friend at that time was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, this is so hard. Everybody was telling me, oh, I'm so sorry. They rejected me. I said, nobody should be sorry for me. They will invite me to Canada. It took only two years. I was invited. I had the opportunity to go. I said, I'm not going. I'm focusing on another assignment. Speak. One door closes. Speak. Make a, a better door open. Make a, You are never at a disadvantage as a believer. My ending notes. One, prophesy again. If you did it the first time, do it again. Play that word on that situation. Speak that word on that situation. Keep speaking. Keep speaking. Don't stop speaking. Don't let the enemy or the flesh weigh you down. Don't get tired. Speak and speak and speak and don't stop speaking. Let the enemy advise himself and quit. Let the enemy call themselves to instruction and leave you alone. But they will only quit if you will not quit. If you will quit, they will insist. If you insist, they will quit. If you stand, they will leave. They will flee. But if you stand today and fall tomorrow, if you stand today on two legs and stand on one leg tomorrow, they will know you're joking. They will know you're not serious. They will know you don't know who you are. The enemy knows who you are. At least he has a fair idea. You must know who you are. Change the words that come out of your mouth. Don't play with prophecy in First Thessalonians. The Bible says don't play with prophecy. Don't joke with prophecy. Don't play. Don't toy with the fact that there are fake prophets everywhere. It doesn't mean you should joke with the, the instrument of prophecy, the instrument of picking, picking God's word and speaking it. Don't joke with it. Don't play with it. Don't play down on it. And finally, everybody ought to prophesy. There is a template. Even, even, if, even, if, even if everybody is operating in the office of the prophet that foretells events, that operates in the gifts, Right? There is even there is provision for a whole like IBBF the way we are, the whole IBBC, everybody is a prophet. There is provision for orderliness. That's to show you how important it is. So it is very critical that we learn to pick the word of God and speak it and see results. So come to a point where you understand vertical prayer and horizontal speaking, vertical prayer and horizontal decreeing. Vertically, you pray. Horizontally, you decree. The Mary, Mary, even when Jesus, Jesus said, I mean, at the, the marriage, the marriage uh, at Cana, Mary said, Mary said, Mary said, anything he says to you, do it. As in, as in, Mary said, Jesus, these guys have run out of wine. Give them wine. And Jesus said, woman, this is not my time. And the woman did not argue with him. She knew him. She knew the Lord. She just turned to the servants and said, whatever he tells you, whatever he says, do it. And so he, it is an inbound marketing principle. They went to him looking at him expectantly. He had to say something. He now said, go and fetch water and give to the gov. They fetch water and give to the We should all be prophets. We cannot be taken advantage of by the world. You have the word in your mouth. Speak it. Leave it. Make sure that you first of all obey the word and you know it. If you're challenged. You should have a defense. You should have it. And that defense is the Holy Spirit. It's not so much what you store in your head. It's what you store in your spirit. 
It's not what you what you memorize, what you cram, as what is soaked up in your heart, what is soaked up in the spirit, as enabled by the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to, you know, just wrap this up by praying and then I'll have us ask questions. Father, thank you for the gift of your word. And I'm so grateful every time when I'm in the fellowship and I'm about to thank you for something, the first thing that comes to my mind, to my mouth, is your word, the gift of your word. Your word is spirit. Your word is life. Your word is the answer to the death that the flesh presents, the environment, the world is suffering under. Your word. Thank you, God, for inspiring us. We may have an hour to teach here, but we know, Holy Spirit, that you will instruct your people and help them to go and consume the word. Consume the word. The prophet said, thy words were found, and I did eat them. I did eat them. I did eat them. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Thank you, God, for exposing us to your word and the spirit of the word. Because as the Holy Spirit makes contact with every one of us, poured out on every one of us, the words that come out of our mouth, there will be spiritual words. There will be spirit and there will be life. They will bring light in darkness. They will bring understanding in moments of confusion. They will drive away satanic oppression. They will deliver the captives. Thank you for your word. And thank you for the power in the word. And thank you for watching over your word to perform it. We're so grateful. Thank you, Father. Be exalted in Jesus' name. If there is anybody here who's not born again, please, you should know, this is my third disclaimer, I am not talking to you. If you are not born again, I am not even referring to you. You are a victim as everyone else that is not born again. If you are not born again, you are in darkness. You have no, no, you can't shout at the devil. You are a slave serving the devil. It is a very, don't take this lightly. I mean, you can take it now, or you wait till the end of days to realize that what we were saying is true. But at that time, it will be too late. So anybody who is not born again, as Jesus said, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're already a living dead person. You're in trouble. And what you can do is very easy. You will just pray a simple prayer. And if you're out there, I'm about to just pray with you. If you're out there watching us now, or maybe you're watching after, please pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord, Jesus, I am a sinner. I was born into sin, but today I receive your word. I surrender my heart, my life, my body, and all that is mine to you. I receive you this moment, and I surrender to you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all my sins and of all my wrong and translate me from darkness into light. Pour out your spirit upon me and help me to walk in obedience. Help me to walk in obedience to your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, please don't be isolated. Reach out to one of us. Join our Telegram group. Uh, please, if anybody can get it just get the telegram group and drop and if any of us here hasn't joined the telegram group please join the telegram group it helps us in fellowship iron is happening iron all right and then it will also help you to get uh, notified of the meetings and the different things that happen in this fellowship thank you so much is there anybody who has a question whether on what we taught or on anything else as god helps us there will be an answer please if you have a question just raise your hand and we will be glad to, by the help of the Holy Spirit, take, treat the question. Okay, looks like there's no question. I will hand it over to Sister Dawn. If there's no question. It, well, you have it. Uh, you have Yami with the question. Oh, I can't see Yami. Oh, I, uh, I'm seeing my little girl. Yami, good to see you. 
Hello, my brother in Christ. I just wanted to say, I don't have questions. I'm just like, oh my goodness. It was so good. It was so good. Thank you for blessing us with the word. I got so much revelation. Um, and I just wanted to thank you. I really wanted to thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. And Manny's You're here. Food whack. You're the best, brother. You're the best. God bless you. God bless you, brother. We can't wait to see you when you come. I'll be there. I mean, I feel like coming next week. Yeah. Oh, let's go. What a surprise, Manny. What a yeah. surprise. Wow. Uh, no, nah, God bless you. God bless you, man. You're 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 a powerful prayer warrior, brother. You're strong in the spirit. Um, Amen. Yeah, man. Just thank you. Thank you so much, man. Wow. And you gonna you gonna you gonna be in Houston next week? I hope I plan to be in Houston even tomorrow. Well, he's but speaking, I have to follow me. He's speaking the word. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, 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 if God wills it and you end up coming out here, let us know. Maybe we'll, we'll take a trip down to Houston and, and see you guys. Yeah. I'm planning to come to Dallas as well. But, but, oh, but it's oh even yeah. better. There yeah. you, go. you guys can come and stay Save here. Save miles on the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Let's bye, guys. You. Good morning. Bye, bye. Thank you for your word. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Thank, Thank you. you for your word. It was... It was Hi, friend. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Thank you so much for this Thank morning, you. for giving us this... Tremendous um, um, word in God. I, I bless you. And, um, Thank you. Amen. God keep you in, 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 in favor. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Have a wonderful Amen. Day. Okay. Oh, okay. I want you guys, to say um, Help Miss Laura. 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 Please don't forget to raise your hands, guys. Please. Good morning. Thank you. Um, no um, questions, but blessings. Godspeed in your um, travel. And Amen. Uh, testimony to Angela's prayers for me the other day. Um, by mm -hmm. mistake, I said I was going to the doctor on Tuesday. I went yesterday. And it's so, um, God is like amazing. The doctor mm. sort of changed his tune when he went and looked at um, x-rays of mine. And then what he said the last time, which he told me I was going to have to do, he said, well, it's like fairly confident from what I see and what the radiologist has said that um, you really don't have to like worry, but I do want you to come back in three months. So I really believe in faith that there is, um, everything's cleared up. And thank you, Jesus. Like Angela prophesied about that on Tuesday. So I'd like everyone to try to remember to share their testimonies because- just um, so powerful for us to speak what God has performed through the Holy right. Spirit in the yes. other prophets, which That's actually right. connects to exactly what your teaching um, was spreading the word to us today. Thank you so much. God speak to you. Laura. Good to see you, Laura. Thank Thanks you so you. much for sharing that testimony. And I, I'd encourage you, Sister Laura, please keep speaking. Please keep prophesying. We can see what God is doing in your life. Do not stop speaking, please. If you need to write down scriptures that appeal to you, that reach you, that instruct you, that bless you, write them down. And every time you see them, speak them. Thank you so much. And I, I really appreciate the way you attend the fellowship. It is really beautiful to see that you attend the fellowship consistently along with other brethren. The consistency is something that God honors. It is something that God honors. So God bless you, Laura. God bless you. Anybody oh, else? You. I don't see anybody else. You can do Joe uh, 512. All right. Is that Sister Dawn speaking? I got to see. I have to see Sister Dawn. Yes, That's it's me. All right, amazing. Job 5.12, this is one of those things. I mean, you can see what we're doing. Wow. I mean, it just clicked now. Job 5.12 is a prophecy. We take the word of God and we speak it to the north, south, east, and west, and we don't stop. We don't stop. Pastor Moore even encourages us that you speak this scripture away from fellowship. Speak it every time, every moment. Speak it during your personal prayer time. Speak it, I mean, speak it when you're about to eat some food. Speak it anytime. So can we go? Job 5, 12. Thank you, Father. You, Lord, you disappoint the devices of 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 the devices
That's to the north, to the south now. Lord, you disappoint. You disappoint the devices of the prophets and their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Speak it to the east. God, 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 the devices of the prophets and their enterprise. Their enterprise. As we say it for this last time, listen to every word of that scripture. Every word. Let's say to the West now. Lord, you disappoint Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you what, I feel bad. I feel bad for the crafty. I mean, I don't know who made them crafty. I feel bad for the crafty because their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless you. See you tomorrow at prayer time. God bless you. God bless everyone. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you. Amen.